and you can have a little more pool. You know? And they'll say, well, hey, we need you to go to OB, we need you to be OB. You know, you might be able to put a word in, hey, I can do this or I can do that. But most of the time, they're going to see what you can do. Let me ask uh, Sergeant Chambers this. I know when you're going through med school and you're not doing the civilian thing, you're not doing the HPSD, your senior, your senior year or your fourth year of med school, you're actually going out and rotating through hospitals and you're doing some of your clinicals out there where you're going to, to, uh, to possibly do residency. So you get out there and you get known and you can also make an impression so that when you apply for that residency, they already know you and you sort of have a, 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 a sort of foot in the door. Is that possible? Yeah. And like, Thank as there are four years of uh, med students, and they're doing their rotations at MUSC, can they go to, say, a military facility where they could possibly do a residency and spend some clinical time to maybe yes. get themselves in the door for that? Yes. Um, that first summer, when you go to, uh, we would call it OBLC, also basically a ship course, uh, for that 45 days, that's when you want to do the majority of your because you're going to have pretty much all, you're going to have a representative from pretty much every Army uh, hospital there. You're going to have someone there teaching a class, one of your instructors may be the next, um, maybe the next, maybe in charge of the next hospital you go to. Definitely. Network, get your foot in the door, um, let them know, hey, when I in class with you, you know, summer of 2012. Y'all got any slots open at uh, Walter Reed in D.C.? This, that's what you want to do. In thoracic surgery? In thoracic surgery. Yeah. yeah. So definitely. Now, a lot of you are, you know, in the process of going to med school. You understand the, the thick and the, and the intensity and all that. To get your residency is even above, above that as far as intensity, competition. So to get in med school, you're thinking, I'm in dental school, you're thinking, Gosh, you know, this is intense. It is. But to get your residency, it's the next level and it's several bumps above or is competition, getting where you want to, doing the match, it is it is intense. It is. You have to do an application, you have to do a personal statement, you have to do all the rigor mall just like to get in med school, you gotta now do it to get a residency. So and then add the the army in here, the military, then you've got to do that jockeying and impressing and getting the application and doing all that and also finding a slot, also getting the military to say yes you can have that slot adds another level sort of, of, of intensity to it. But yeah. you can, it, it's, it's done, it's doable and like you said 90 something percent of their people eventually get put in a place but he's not telling you the satisfaction level those people. Yes. So how satisfied are those people that did get you know, into 90% of their residency? Some of them might be ticked that they got put in OBGYN and they really wanted to be a thoracic surgeon. Um, and I'll tell you, a lot of these hoops and turns that they can jump through when you go around um, helps the higher up weed out the ones that really don't know. You know what I'm saying? That makes sense? So if I know I've put a lot of obstacles in your way, or not put, but if I know there are a lot of obstacles in your way, I know you got to fill out a lot of paperwork, I know you got to score high on this test, that test, and you do achieve that, and you come to me saying you want this, then hey, cool, only got one to give, but you're in a class of 30, you don't want that made it, so perfect, you the one I want, that makes sense to you? And sometimes the Army or military looks at that sort of achievement more than, say, somebody that's got a big high MCAT or exactly. something, you know, that, uh, you know, is, they're looking for that, that commitment, that yeah. dedication, exactly. that, that willingness to go beyond, and they will reward that in these sorts of ways. If you're the person that thought you deserved it because of this, but the Army's using other criteria, going to be pissed as a result of that, but the person that gets it is going to be thrilled over the fact that he's where or she's where she wants to be. Exactly. Um, the best thing I can tell you about overall in the Army, if a door is closed in your face, you're going to keep knocking and find another door. Because if you don't, then apparently they're going to be on the other side. I guess they don't want to come in. You know, 
always. Keep an eye on never take more than once. Yeah, so you get, you succeed the match, all right? That's a, a big <coughs> obstacle that for you med students are going to have to do. Now you get, uh, Matt, you don't have to deal with that. So once you're once you're through dental school, you might do a, felt a specialty, like you said, and then you'll have to tack that on. And then once you're out, you're going to have to then spend either four or five years giving back to the Army. The rest of you get through your residency. If you spend six years in a residency, you got six years to get back to the Army. If you get two or four, you get four years. So you got to give them back at least four years. All right, you get through your, your residency, you say you're done. At that point, you are military. You lose your citizen, I mean, you know, your citizen, your civilian status. Right. And you are now 100% military for those four, five, six years. They will tell you where to go, and when you're going to go, and how you're going to go, and they're going to tell you when to get up, what to eat, what to wear, what you can do, what you can't do, when you can have vacation, when you can't have vacation. So you're going to be in the military. The military is, I was there, and uh, Sergeant Chambers can really disagree. It is, and he has already said a little bit about it, it's a way of life. And if you, for some reason, do not match up with that way of life. And I try to tell students that uh, there are about three reasons I think that this program is, you should seriously consider this program. One is if you don't want mind this kind of lifestyle, if you hopefully need to know as much about the military as possible, and there is a lot of positive things about the military, guys. I'm not here trying to put that down, but there is. So if you don't mind that, that lifestyle, and if you don't mind being patriotic, I'd say if you have a problem with, you know, you're very sensitive politically and you have major issues with what, you know, maybe your country or your congressman or whatever is going on, you need to love your country if you're going to do this. So if you have problems with, with you know, what's going on politically and you just are not in for going to war or for protecting uh, the homeland or whatever, then you should do this because you're going to be indoctrinated with patriotism as long as yes. you're in the military. You're going, yes. to, you're going to salute the flag. You're going to, to say the pledge of allegiance to the flag, and you're going to be serving your country. So if that's a problem, you need to think about it. The other thing, the third thing, is if you don't mind traveling. Because if you get into this, you are going to be deployed. You're going to go somewhere away from mama, away from loved ones, so you're going to have to move around. Yes. And they're going to tell you where to go. You're not going to say, I want to go to Hawaii, I want to go to Europe, I want to do this. You're going to find yourself in places that you don't want to be, more than likely. So if those sorts of things are okay with you, then what this man is telling you is golden. So you should listen carefully to what he says. And of course, these other things that I've stressed to you here about the match, and realizing that there is going to be a certain amount of stuff that is going to happen that might not be as you imagined that it was going to be or you had hoped that it was because there's going to be surprises. Some pleasant, there'll be some pleasant surprises, but there will also be some, some things that you'll say, gosh, why didn't I find out this sooner? But again, saying that that usually happens with anything that you do. So you know, if you don't go with this program and you borrow the money and you end up with, uh, what, 180 to $300,000 of debt. This is what happens. I served as a general member for the time people to sponsorship in the rank of a what now? But that's a cap if you fail residency. If you fail residency or don't make it through residency, you're going to be a captain, but you're just going to be a, a general officer in the Army. So you're still going to be in the Army. But yeah, if you fail out of if you fail out of med school or you fail out of residency, you still belong to them. Yes. So you got to pay them their. You know. yep. And another thing, if you don't keep your nose clean, and you end up doing drugs or something like that in the army, and also if you don't keep physically fit, and you don't you know put on a certain kind of persona, they will do things right. so that you move on to something else, and they can have yep. you doing things so. Uh, realize that you know, you're not immune to, I mean, you say, well, I want out of this. I, you know, if you don't go into this, you go to med school two years and you say, this is not for me, I want out. They'll say, okay, you go out, but you didn't got to pay us back our time. 
You don't get to walk home. Exactly. You don't go home after. So it's, it's a commitment. It, it is. Of commitments is probably the most commitment I've. It's definitely the biggest commitment I've ever made in my life. And, um, and it will probably be yours as well. That's a big difference between being and civilian kind of soldier. Uh, like, right quick, just like uh, the doctor was saying, they are going to tell you what to do. They're going to tell you what to do. Uh, but a lot of cases, they will provide you with some choices. But it's going to be their choices. It's going to be where, where they want you to so, uh, Not like, well, I think I want to go and work in Maryland. No. <laughs> you can go work here, here, or here. One of these three places. <laughs> and then you can pick them. That's one of them. In the back this time. I right. that's how I picked you. Okay. Um, besides the required active duty, is there required reserve as well as um, Every, and a lot of people won't tell you this either, but every, um, every tour, every enlistment is a, at least an eight year enlistment. And I'll explain that. Um, let's say you do, say your residency was four years, or your school was four years, and you only have to pay back four years. Well, you're going to be what's called IRR, an active ready reserve, for four more years. That means you sit at home, of course, do your regular job and everything. But you're going to be basically on call for four years in case we need to call you back for some more service. Um, I've heard of people being called back in the 70s, early 80s, but not of recent. So I don't invite to call back. Um, if you do six years, um, two years, you'll be on IR. Uh, it's not, it doesn't count towards your money, it doesn't count towards your grade, it doesn't count towards anything else in the world. But for two years, we're going to keep your name in the file after you finish your tour, just in case you need to come. That's standard throughout the Army, eight years. Uh, so what do you do? Two years, seven years, or if you do the full eight, you don't have to worry about it. And, uh, when I get out, I don't have to worry about it because uh, I've already done those eight years. So say a person goes to med school for right. four years and gets a four-year residency with the Army. You still have another four years after that? Right. So, because your residency, um, you're probably not, you're not even going to be in uniform. Your residency is part of your schooling. That's, that's for you. That's part of your training. Um, now, after that, you're going to give us four years. You're going to be in uniform working in a military facility for four years. After that, do what you want. I have a question. While you're doing your residency, you get paid as a resident. Do you guys realize that? Yes. Start making 40, 45000 a year as a resident. Do you get any stipend from the Army while you're doing your residence? Um, no. The, the stipend is just for med school. Right. Um, then afterwards. You so you're, you know li what you're living on your residency salary as a resident working in an Army facility? I guess the Army, I guess that Army right. facility is paying you a salary? Yes. Well, they, they don't actually pay you a salary. But they provide, um, they're, they're going to provide you pretty much everything. Through housing. Right. So, and they um, should be giving you some spending money, right? Though. Well, that's, you're going to be getting, uh, I think Your rank? Right. You're going right. to get whatever pay your rank right. is? Right, you're going to be getting uh, second lieutenant. Okay. So that's, so the, so that's how, that's where that, that's where the, the 45,000. The rank starts kicking in there. Right. And that's something you need to realize because if you're going out on a residency that isn't so that, that isn't military, you're gonna make forty, maybe forty, forty-five thousand at, at, a, at a, a you know a year. But with the army, you're gonna be lieutenant pay. Is that right? Correct. So lieutenant pay. So what are you gonna be making a year based on that? Um, roughly about, about forty-five, forty. I, I think you might even end up making more when you add all the once you add once you add everything in together. Um, because, like I said, let me set up the final slide. There are several other added pages that you can receive. So there's a good <laughs> possibility as a resident in the military, you right. can make more money than you would as a resident that exactly. are not in the military. These are your, these are the pages that everyone receives. You're going to get base pay, basic allowance for substance, which is food, your housing money, uh, verbal specialty pay, depending on your jobs, and your board certification pay. Now your extra stuff, annual lump sums, um, 